right, so here we are now, finally. Welcome to the garage. I've got a little bit of heat on in here. So I thought it'd be a great spot to uh, to nail down this uh, part of the video and just kind of be in this controlled environment. Yeah, so almost a year later and uh, we're still alive. Um, seems like the only thing consistent about our videos is that we're putting them one out about every uh, 10 months or so. Anyways, thanks for all your patience. We're hoping to get more videos out. Good goal would be like once a month or something like that. Um, We've upgraded our editing computer a bit. The goal is just to get more efficient getting it edited and off to you guys. So we've got some exciting news we'll share with you at the end of this one. The 520-500 comparison video did really well. Uh, thanks to all you guys um, liking and subscribing. And So yeah, if any of you watching uh, enjoy the video, if you go ahead and click like, uh, subscribe, Hit the little bell so you're notified of when we come out with a new video, whenever that is. Send us some comments. We're eager to see what you guys have to say. And if you have any questions, if we can help, we're, we're super happy to do so. And uh, yeah, it goes a long way to help the channel. The things that we continue to love about the machine and don't want to take it for granted for is the size of it. It's just such a great size as an all around um, when you need something that's compact that can you know, get through the trails quickly without having to cut down tons of more trees or widen your trail, or widen your bridges and passes and stuff like that. Uh, the cargo capacity is awesome. Holiday type stuff that Courtney loves so much. Brand new machine, just like the 500. Right away, off to uh, doing random tasks. The torque of the machine, it's got lots of power, just like the 500 did maybe a little bit more um, so it's it's ready to work hard and have a lot of fun paddle shifting um, personally I really like the paddle shifting instead of the whole belt deal she's gone right for fifth gear holy cow not so much as like a question of durability more so just being more in control of what rpm the engine's at there's probably nothing wrong with belt transmissions but it's it's neat just to not have that sort of that big engine rev up when you go to pull away and then the engagement and all that and it seems like a lot of excessive rpm and you know noise and vibration where with the gear transmission you can just kind of gently pull away and accelerate and keep the uh the revs sort of more where you want them. It's just a real workhorse when it's called up. Like it really performs well under pretty much any task I expect it to do. It's always done it and then some. So it's uh, it's always been like a pleasant surprise when you go to put it to work. Sometimes you might think, oh, that might just be too much of a, a load or too much of a trailer to pull. Um, well, that's gonna feel like too much weight in the back and it just steps up to the plate and does a great job. So yeah, it, it never uh, it never lets us down ever. So reliability and all that kind of thing. It always starts, it always goes, it always, you know, it's always good on fuel, never lets us down. Okay, so newly developed observations. This is the same as the 500. I noticed it before, but I never really put it into perspective until we sort of started on one of our projects that we're working on. There's a job site and there's a really steep decline and like the engine braking is just awesome. Like first gear at idle, creeping down a hill and barely having to touch the brakes, you know, with a trailer on the back with some weight in it. And it's been really impressive. So after having like almost a whole winter of the machine with the tracks on it in some pretty good snow, It spun the tracks, the power was great for doing like that kind of slower paced to mid paced speeds and mid-level kind of fun. Never put it in like fifth gear and floored it through powder and tried to do anything what I'd consider a little bit too adventurous for a machine like this. If you want to do that kind of stuff, you need something with just a, a bigger engine. You know, you, you need to be in like the 1000 CC class probably and to be able to go flying through the snow. Having said that, at the mid speeds, this machine, it's got tons of power because of the gear reduction that the tracks provide and the torque that the engine has. It goes through the snow, you know, with, with a passenger and 
a load in the back. You don't feel like there's any kind of loss in power because of the tracks. All you feel is just a, a bit of a loss in speed, but you still have the sensation of speed because you're, you know, you're going through heavy, thick snow and, you know, it feels like you're kind of flying over it. So it's still, it feels, even though you're not going, you know, 70 kilometers an hour, just a different type of fun that's experienced in a different way. And uh, it does that really, really well. And it's a lot of fun. The machine for the price and what it's designed to do, it's really hard to beat this machine. It's just a fantastic machine. But in a perfect world, let's just talk about a couple of tweaks that we'd make if we were at the design board at Honda. Not having turf mode is kind of a big deal for if you own a property and you want to use your machine sort of on on grass um, in areas that you've landscaped. Maybe you've got a gravel driveway with some tight turns. That's where not having a, a turf mode really can turn up your your driveway or your grass or, or anything like that. So you have to make really gentle turns and even so uh, you may not just, you may have to stay off those areas completely unless you can sort of like drive onto them straight and back off them straight because as soon as you start turning the one tire is going to uh one or both will actually start chewing up the ground also on pavement making tighter turns and it's really hard on the tires you can really hear them kind of squealing away when you're when you're making tighter turns which a lot of times you can't avoid one thing we thought about so the rubicon atv came out and it has a really cool drivetrain with i believe it's a locking front differential but it's got two ranges. And I mean, that just seemed kind of like, especially since it's a 520 as well, sort of why not make that work in, in this machine? I guess there's a reason for it, but that would have been a pretty neat setup. Um, a big one for us road runners, like if you like to drive your machine on the road a lot and you've got a lot of uh, flat areas and where you want to sustain a bit, it's like some higher speeds, nothing crazy or anything like that. But um, in fifth gear, the machine, near its uh, cutoff of say around 63 kilometers an hour it it's really revving really high it would be nice if it had a sixth gear because this machine i believe has like the torque and the grunt to be able to move the machine at that speed at way lower rpm uh, of course unless you come to a hill or, or you're carrying like a heavy load or anything like that but you know, just to be trying to make up some time on the road and, and feel like you're moving sort of with traffic and stuff like that. But without having the engine rev so high, I think that would be awesome. I think not having a deluxe version of the 520 is a little bit odd. I think it'd be a neat opportunity for people to buy the machine from the factory with some upgrades that they were planning on kind of doing anyways, sort of like right from the beginning, you know, getting some aluminum wheels, bigger, better tires, some better suspension, Things like that I think would be pretty cool to offer that. And they do do that on the 700 and the 1000. So I guess they're kind of afraid of scaring away people with price point, but you know, a lot of us would be going out and buying different wheels and tires and customizing it and things like that. So, you know, and the machine is a bit of a rough ride. Once you start doing some trail riding, you're gonna feel it in your back and then everything you start to get bounced around and jostled and feeling like you've kind of been in a blender for a little while. Dump lever on both sides. I find myself walking around the machine a lot. No, it's not a big deal. It's not like the machine's 30 feet long or anything like that, but you know, you're around on that side and you wanna go and dump it. Maybe you're up against a pile or it's kind of awkward. You do have to go around the front. By no means a deal breaker, but it would be kind of a handy thing. And I believe the Pioneer 1000 had that. So, you know, the stock cup holders are, are kind of a joke. But when you're out for like the day, if you want to take, you know, a reasonable amount of water, they're just so small. The interior storage for things like your wallet, phone, um, all that, they don't have anywhere really at all to put those things. If we were designing it, it would be neat to have a park forward neutral reverse lever like the pioneer 1000 the whole reverse setup it's it's not a big deal but it would be a little bit slicker just to be able to especially if you had like a plow on your machine or some kind of accessory it would be more positive just to you wouldn't have to look at the screen to see am i in reverse or or all that kind of thing i notice that happens to me a lot if i don't click at the you know the second time or whatever so uh, it would be neat just to know, like intuitively, you move this lever to a certain spot, oh, that's reverse. 
when you're doing those type of forward backward tasks uh, frequently, this mechanism isn't the most user friendly for that. So answering some of the common uh, comments, the big one, I guess, is, is it worth spending the extra money on the 520? And really, I would have to say it all boils down to the dump box. Let's talk about the other three items that were supposed to be improved. That's the engine size, so horsepower and torque, um, suspension tweaks, and, and the shift mapping. I don't think any of those three warrant spending the extra money to do the upgrade. Like if you own a 500 and you're really thinking about upgrading just for the sake of, oh, there's a replacement model out now, or there's a newer one and, and you're kind of getting caught up in it. If you're buying it for those three things, I think you're going to be kind of disappointed because you're talking about like eight or 9% more power or displacement anyways. So that's not something you're really going to notice unless you're in fifth gear and you're going up a long hill and you really want to hold your speed. That's just going to help a little bit. And again, none of that is night and day. So we're not talking 20 or 30 percent more displacement or horsepower, which is something that you would really feel um, <clears throat> without a doubt. It's just such a small improvement that it's it's a move in the right direction, but in our opinion, wouldn't be worth it to go out and spend the extra money and, and fuss around with selling a machine or trading and all that just to do. And that same thing applies with the suspension and the shift mapping. I would not say that it's worth upgrading for those things. It's just, are you somebody that's going to need a dump box and use it or at least that bed layout if you're going to find value in having like the tailgate i really do believe that it's worth the upgrade so if you're going to use the dump box a ton then it's worth it and if not it's basically the same machine some more uh tips and must have mods okay here's a big tip after um dad kind of pointed out with me because i was saying geez sometimes it just doesn't start and i'm cranking a lot and all this kind of stuff did you wait for the fuel pump to build up pressure and then try ever since i've been doing that let the fuel come up until you can hear it shut off and then start the machine and this is mainly an issue when it's cold but it's been starting every single time so if you don't let it build up pressure and shut off you could be running into where your machine's cranking over a lot and then starting with kind of sputters and stuff like that we had a comment asking about the roof and could you talk with your passenger while driving at some of the higher speeds and one thing that came to mind is that a fabric roof is definitely quieter the engine sounds like from the exhaust or the engine vibrations are reflected off of whatever kind of roof that you put on the machine if you choose to and the hard plastic or a metal roof is going to reflect that sound back at you so it's going to be a lot louder if you need a roof but you're sensitive to sound levels or you need to be able to talk with your passenger a fabric roof would be the option You're definitely going to need to do something about storage for items, uh, small items, if you're going to be, you know, riding on the road and stuff where you need to have uh, paperwork, um, license information, or, you know, you need somewhere to keep your wallet and, you know, driver's license or whatever you need, whatever your local laws are. So you're going to want to do something, whether it's a bicycle tube or get a glove box uh, modification which of course requires like some cutting side mirrors are a definite uh good way to go at the very minimum a single rear view mirror above but the side mirrors are great if you're going out on the road at all you want to be able to see vehicles coming behind you the mirrors are really handy when you're backing up and you're in close quarters and you know to be turning your neck around a whole lot and all that kind of stuff where you can actually set your mirrors up and see your rear tires and you can kind of like back up and maneuver around things without having to turn your head all the way around. So the mirrors are our opinion a must have. Upgrading the overall tire size, um, the diameter of the tires, a huge upgrade for the machine, this machine in particular, because it, it substantially increases your ground clearance if you're going to a 27 or 28 inch tire. 
you want to really be sure that you're not going to have any clearance issues which is the trickiest part about buying uh wheels and tires uh make sure you don't get like excessive rubbing and uh things like that but when you go to a larger size like that you're just going to be it's like you're getting a free lift kit at the same time um the only drawbacks are going to be that you lose some of your lower gearing uh, if you need that because the larger tires are going to change your final drive uh, but at the same time larger tires roll over things better you get better flotation um, you can you know having the bigger ground clearance means you can get over some of the larger obstacles um, you'll roll over those obstacles easier and you'll have a bit better rim protection so stuff like that it's just a great upgrade to do but you know not everyone needs to do that either it just depends on your riding style and your where you're actually using your machine so yeah here's a little tip that i came up with uh when uh loading up your your box um if you shift your load back a bit which actually puts more um gotta watch it because it puts more weight on your rear axle when you start to to overhang um but if you, if you keep your load kind of middle of the dump box or even towards the back of the dump box a little bit, um, when you go to, to hit your, go to hit your dump, um, you will not have to be, you know, yanking as hard to get that sucker to dump. Um, it doesn't ride as well cause you're unloading your front tires. So you're not, your steering is going to be a little worse. Be careful if you're on uneven ground, as I said before, but the way this is loaded you can see um yeah i might be able to pull this lever and with little effort yeah little time maybe 10 pounds 10 pounds of lifting force not even and it just up it goes one straggler oh yeah and another tip when you back into a pile where you're going to dump put it in back into forward so you you're in reverse you back up to your pile before you do the dump, put your machine in forward because it's too easy to go back. You do your thing, you get distracted, you dump the load, you come back, you get in the machine and you go to pull away to, to get rid of some stragglers there and you forgot that you're still in reverse. And then, you know, whoops, different types of languages being tossed around. So yeah, keep that little tip in mind. I really have to start remembering to do that because you could do a whole lot of damage to your muffler um you know depending on what you're backing into tear off your tailgate which is typically folded down when you're uh when you're dumping so of course you're at a weak point maybe you already thought of that maybe you're a lot smarter than me now you can hop back in you've already put it in drive before so you've idiot proofed yourself and whew, off you go So we've had some some questions about the the mods on the 520 that we did. Most of the questions were sort of about the wheel and tire setup. The 28 by 10 by 14 inch GBC Canadi Mongrel tires mounted on 14 inch Delta ITP steel wheels. And we've combined that with inch and a half wheel spacers just to give it a little bit more stance. Overall, it's worked really well. Um, these came off the 500. They were on the 500 for a couple of years before we sold it. Um, so there's around 4,500 kilometers on them or so quite a bit of that is road running and uh, we've been really happy because they're really haven't shown a lot of signs of wear they're starting to now but uh, it's pretty minor so we're really happy with them um, they are maybe a little bit on the heavy side for a machine this size so they're they're not very compliant they're really resistant to sort of flexing especially when you have them pumped up a bit but other than that they're fantastic so we've got the mirrors, uh, the side mirrors. We got rid of the middle mirror and we stuck with the side mirrors. Uh, they're made by Seismic and we've got them mounted sort of upside down or inverted. Keeps them a little closer to the machine, out of the way of branches. They work really well and it looks a little bit cleaner. We've mounted the Honda rock sliders. They look pretty good. They do protect the lower chassis on the sides pretty well, but there are some other options out there on the market you might want to look into as well if you're considering something to uh, protect your chassis a bit. So we have the Honda hard roof. It's worked pretty well. It came off the 500 while I'm talking about that. 
there were a few people that asked about compatibility. You're probably not gonna have any problems with mirrors, windshields, roofs, anything to do with the general roll cage and the front half of the machine will be pretty much compatible with the 500. The windshield that we have is really just a wind deflector, but it's a super must have when you're in any kind of climate where your, your temperatures get down a bit. Got the garage door back on this finally, which is super handy uh, for when I'm bringing in firewood here at the house. I can drive right in our garage and uh, close the door behind me unload the wood, take it in. It's an attached garage, so I can just carry it into the, the wood box in the house. And it's really handy because I can just open and close the door and uh, keep the heat in the garage as much as possible so that you don't have doors open for a lengthy period of time while I'm messing around with the uh, garage door buttons on the wall and stuff like that. So that's a really minor mod, but it goes a long way. There's a rubber floor mat in the box and it really protects the uh, the bed really well. So if you're dropping in some chunks of concrete or, or rocks or things like that, where you're just being a little bit rough on it, it's gonna make the box last a lot longer. And so far it's worked really well. It's easy just to lift out and clean it out now and then. Uh, I've got this Relevate Design spike tube mounted weather resistant bag. I had it lying around from a bicycle that I used before and it was just handy to throw in since there's not a lot of storage or there's like basically no storage in the machine from the factory. It's not fully waterproof, but it works pretty well. There are bags you can get them out on the cage and things like that if you need more space, which would be neat, but I just had this one lying around, so why not? So obviously, uh, as you saw in the last video, there are the Camso tracks. Turn this machine into a full four season beast. Amazing upgrade, really. They're not cheap, but what it does to a machine that here in Canada, you'd only really use maybe three, uh, three seasons. It really turns, it takes that fourth season, which for us can be really long and uh, makes the machine just as useful um, actually all the way through the winter. So it's, those have been a huge handy upgrade and there's something to consider if you're in a climate similar to us and you want to keep using your machine uh, year round. And I promise I will do that track video and have it out for you guys soon. I know I said two weeks like a year ago, but uh, that just pretty much sums up how life has been around here. So most recently, actually, we have the Honda chainsaw bracket. So it's been pretty cool. I don't know if you can see it through the headrest there, but uh, I've got a little still MS-190 in it and I've been ripping around the ranch pretty good and it holds the saw really solid and the box is still pretty much completely uh, useful. So you don't have a, you know, a saw in there flying around when you're going through the trails or whatever. And that was the main reason I wanted to do that. So, you know, we can be cutting up some downed trees and throw the wood into the back and it's not really gonna affect the chainsaw. It's actually a pretty, pretty cool upgrade. Finally, a little custom upgrade we did was um, a bracket for a Billy Goat nine horsepower walk behind leaf blower. Um, we do a lot of leaf blowing for our customers. Um, a lot of it is to do with sort of preparing driveways for the uh, winter season of snow removal. And also if we're gonna be doing some driveway grading, it's nice just to get the sticks and the leaves right off. So we did get the walk behind blower, which has been really great. The only thing is we've got quite a few driveways now. And in that fall time of year, when the leaves start coming down, you don't have much of a window between hopefully having all the leaves on the ground and then snow coming. So basically when we decide we've got to go out and mark our driveways and blow leaves off so that we can see what's uh, on the on the ground underneath the leaves, uh, you really got to do it as fast as you can. So having it mounted on the machine basically eliminates having to go to every driveway and unload the walk behind out of the uh, trailer, which I would tow a small trailer actually behind the Pioneer. And uh, I'd have to unload and uh, unload every time. So it took a bit extra time. And then of course you're walking and pushing it and, and at the end of the day, and then do that two or three or four days uh, it's a lot of walking and a lot of messing around. So having it on the front of this machine just meant the guys and I can just fly down the road and get to the driveway and start clearing the leaves. And even between close driveways, we pretty much just keep it running. Uh, so it's been really handy and a pretty cool upgrade. But again, that's just a homemade mount.
Uh, mods that we're considering, let's say some upgraded suspension just to make this machine more plush. And the reason is because our terrain is quite rocky, rooty, hilly. So we're either on kind of the ranch property, like the flat area, or we're on the roads. The stock suspension is 100% fine. It's just once you get into the trails and you're trying to make up some time a bit, you really get bucked around with the stock suspension. Even though there were supposedly some improvements made over the 500, once you get in the bush, you don't notice any improvement. Yeah, so some plush suspension, Alcas, Walker Evans, something like that, maybe in store for us down the road, but uh, it's money. So an LED work light for the back would be pretty cool. Right now, I think uh, this time of year, it's totally dark out by 4.30. So days are pretty short and you still want to do a couple, you know, put in another hour or two or something, depending what you're doing. It would be really cool to do like a little DIY hydraulic uh, dump box mechanism for this. I think that would be really a uh, pretty neat upgrade, especially when you have it loaded up with some firewood and you got the weight on the front of the machine, like towards the front of the bed. Uh, it can be pretty a heavy lift to get that sucker to, to start its dump. Upgrades for tracks, electric power steering, it would be a nice upgrade. It's not 100% needed. Once you get into sort of like the tight trails and you got to back up and start doing some three point or 10 point turns, um, that's where you would kind of notice that it would be great to have some steering assistance, specifically with the tracks on. The locking front differential for our uses wouldn't really, in the, in the spring, summer, fall, wouldn't be a noticeable upgrade for our riding style, but in the winter time to have that locking front differential with the tracks on, my gut tells me that it would really double the capabilities of what the machine can do once you start getting on some hills and some side hills and you're trying to turn and, and go up a steep incline. That's where the tracks and not having a locking front differential really, the machine falls flat on its face um, and you can not necessarily get stuck because you can usually back out of those situations, but it'll just stop you in your tracks, literally. And uh, you'll have to back up and find another way or yeah. Uh, soft doors and panels, uh, windshield, a heater. To close this in for the winter time with the tracks on would be pretty neat. You can get uh, quite the tornado effect of snow when it's cold out and the snow is fluffy it will just coat you and everything in the machine. So you're gonna, you know, wanna be like goggles and basically snowmobile suit and all that kind of stuff if you wanna go out for uh, any kind of duration. You know, if you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the winter time with tracks and, and uh, doing some exploring or longer rides, um, closing it in would be something to consider. Uh, but then you're, you know, you're into a lot of money, uh, windshield wipers, stuff like that we have ordered from crossroads 3d some bigger cup holders so it should be able to handle things bigger than little pop cans and beer cans and stuff like that so that'll be a nice upgrade and the glove box and we're doing um we're getting a phone holder for the console too so those are actually in the works and they're coming and we're pretty excited to see what those look like and get them installed because just the lack of practical storage somewhere to throw your phone or your wallet quickly um, the machine lacks that big time. Oh yeah, so some exciting news, which is somewhat recent. Dad got a 520. Yeah, so dad actually had in the past couple of years, the Pioneer 1000, the three seater. Uh, I think it was a 2018 one. And he got that right when we got the 500 actually. They were yeah. both, we got them within about a month. Courtney and I got the 500 and he got the Not 1000. Bad. He kind of used that as his play and work machine. And eventually it really wasn't kind of, I guess, filling in the void. He wanted something a little bit more uh, performance, uh, a little bit lighter feeling, more suspension and all that kind of stuff. So he ended up getting himself a Razor 1000, XP 1000. And he had a lot of fun with that and he really enjoyed that. But kind of with all the things in recent years and stuff going on, he decided I always saw saw him as the type of rider that would do really well in a in a 500 like the Pioneer 500 or whatever and I guess it was that he had some a lot of seat time when we got the 520 and then of course with the tracks on it and it just really suited his riding style 
and um, he looked at the other two machines and how much money was tied up in it and kind of like, well, you can only use one at a time. And he really liked certain things about each one of those machines, but they were both also physically pretty large. And a lot of our trails are pretty technical and they're not really suited for 1000 CC class machines, especially ones that go bombing around. And, and uh, so anyways, I kind of convinced him ironically to get uh, to sell those off and move to a 520 as well. And it's kind of funny because he convinced Courtney and I to get to to do the upgrade from the 500 to the 520, uh, even though I kind of was planning on having the 500 for like 20 years or whatever. Plus, um, just the dump box was for us like just such a um, it was so enticing. And so we just made the switch, but ironically, then I kind of convinced him to go, hey, just get a 520, it gets the job done. Like it, it rips around, it weaves through the trails, it goes up and over rocks. It's got a pretty nice interface with like the transmission is good, uh, the gearing, all that kind of stuff. And they're just great machines and you can kind of, you don't break the bank when you buy them originally per se so they're because they're a value price point then you can start customizing them as your needs for the machine evolves which for some of you may not change at all because maybe you're just working on like an actual ranch or everything's flat you don't need more ground clearance you don't need bigger tires you don't maybe even need mirrors <laughs> like uh so in those situations, you may find that the machine is just perfect the way it comes right from the factory. And it is such a perfect machine for, for the price and what it's intended to do. It is perfect, but it also is very upgradable. So, you know, and then of course, there's the side of the whole argument where, well, you could, if you're going to do all those upgrades, you might as well just go and buy a premium level machine that's got all the wheels and tires and roof, like a roof, windshield and and cabs and all the different configurations that you can get that are out there that are two or three times as much money, but at least you kind of get it over with and you do tend to get a better value um, if, if everything that you're getting with the machine is actually something that you want. Otherwise, some things could be kind of forced down your neck or you're paying for things that you don't really need just to get something else. I like that about the value machine is that you're not paying for anything that you don't need. You're just paying exactly for what you do need and then everything that is required beyond that you can just personalize it whether it's right away or 10 years down the road you can be making your mods uh, and changing it up as you go thanks to Muskoka Rental again um, we got on the waiting list for the machine they kept us in line and they communicated uh, well and all that and then after quite a wait for Nick and Emily, who wanted to get um, the R-Max 1000, Nick was just 100% set on that. There was no convincing him to get a 520 or a Honda, anything. He had to go for that R-Max 1000. And I must admit, like, it is a fantastic machine. It's quite a bit more money than one of these. Uh, but, you know, you typically get what you pay for. And for, for what that machine is designed to do, it's probably one of the best ones on the market for uh, the blend of like power, speed, uh, performance, and workability to have that type of machine all with a dumping box as well and not looking, uh, you know, cobby or, or sort of like, and of course looks are subjective, but they just really did an awesome uh, job on that machine. So if you're looking at Yamaha or you're not stuck on a specific brand and you're looking for something in that uh, market, it's got to be one of the best. So we do plan on doing a video on that one. Just maybe send us some comments if you are interested in that. All right, so you guys stuck around till now. Once again, we really appreciate your patience on waiting for this follow-up video. Thanks again for subscribing and all the likes and comments. YouTube suggests our videos more to help other people and really helps the channel uh, get up and running.
yeah, so subscribe for more reviews. We're going to be just doing reviews on products that basically we decide to purchase. Uh, we put in the legwork and lots of time and spend our hard-earned dollars on whatever we acquire. So we try to take our needs into consideration and what is going to work best for us. So it's just through ownership and really enjoying something and, and seeing merit in making a video to help others. Um, also... You know, you can follow along on, on our journey as we get a bit more self-sufficient. So it's kind of like the whole homesteading thing uh, and just being able to provide a little bit more for ourselves. Kind of good for the good for the mind, you know, keeps us busy. So far, it's just uh, the chickens and some veggie gardens, but uh, hopefully the future will just keep expanding that. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to see where we're going to go with uh, that and how we progress with our hobby farm around here our trails and the three different homesteads that we have now and it's it's pretty cool so i think we'll keep getting a, a rhythm going with those videos and see what we can come out with for fun to get you guys a little bit more involved why don't we do some voting on some ideas for videos so there's going to be like basically our progress videos that will be just ones that we make as we see fit but then other videos like um, the review ones and bonus videos and stuff. What would you guys like to see next? We've got the RMAX 1000. We could do a review video on that. Or we could do a comparison video of 500 class side-by-side -side to a 1000 class side-by-side. -side. We could do a review on the Kubota MX6000 heated cab tractor, uh, which is a new model as of last year. And while I'm saying that, Keep an eye out if you're into snow blowing or you're curious about some of the ways people deal with winter and snow. We will be shooting out pretty soon a video on how to uh, blow snow with an inverted snow blower and kind of like how it all works and the mechanics of it in our particular setups. Uh, we have quite a few driveways that we do for customers. So we have evolved that business and the machinery that we uh, kind of fine-tuned over the years from what we started with and to where we are now with the three tractors. So if you're into that kind of stuff, that will be coming out pretty soon because that video is almost done. It's pretty basic. It's not as involved as a, a review video. Keep an eye out for that. Just put some put in the comments below your thoughts and ideas or, or cast a vote on which one of those videos you'd like to see next and maybe a little reason uh, why you'd like to see that. So again, guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this one as much as the original. If you have any more questions, things that weren't answered, punch them into the comments and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.